Monday. This session covers weeks 7 and 8. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that takes takes it up to midterm. Routing and switching, switching concepts, configure switch in the labs. Hey, we looked up in general for classes. Petrol. New currency came out in February. Cryptocurrency from Venezuela. <clears throat> Oops, well, we have the um, seven layers, and so we started talking about, <clears throat> we've been doing some work on the data link, talk about the frame, MAC address, 802.3, 802.11, about the physical layer, figures out how to represent the bits on the media network. IP addressing packets, routing protocols, best path, what we talked about, ports and sockets at the transport layer, TCD, TCP, UDP, different types of transport, and in the uh, TCP, IP model, this would all be the application, and then we talk about <clears throat> that hook, the application into whatever application you're actually using. Multi-layered switches, <clears throat> create a router port here to connect to the router, and create a switch port to access to a server, and if you're connecting to another switch, you can create here a trunk. Alright, so we talked about... accessing a workstation and a router. We talked about MAC addressing. <coughs> PCs are accessed by a MAC address. <coughs> and if they connect to this router, they actually connect it based on the MAC address there because that is Ethernet in between there. We talked about those, um, it's a different perspective, the layers in terms of designing the topology of a network, you know, this core area, routers connecting to other routers at other locations, you have a distributive layer, which we distribute the information, and then you have the access layer where you access in to the other layers. <clears throat> okay. In the switching scenarios, we talked about creating a management VLAN. Now, we just happen to pick 99. It could be anything that uh, you choose. Talk about the boot sequence for switches and to understand RAM, NVRAM, flash. We talked recently, or previously, I should say, about half duplex. Send one way, then receive full duplex. You can send and receive at the same time. Switches can identify whether it needs to flip the signal over. So let's just uh, talk briefly about that. <clears throat> I'll do that right here. Then you have a switch, and you have a PC, and let's say you're going to talk to another PC. When the signal comes out of the PC, let's say pins 1 and 2, when it goes into the other PC, it has to come out 3 and 6. Those are our circuits. Well, then the switch flips it over when it goes through. This feature allows the switch to decide if it needs to flip it over or not. For example, if we took another switch... and connected those two, right, and then there's a PC up here. When this PC 
sends the information to this switch and then to this switch. If this switch flipped it over here, then it would be going the wrong direction by the time it got here. So it doesn't flip it between the two switches because it doesn't have to switch circuits. <laughs> yeah, so we have um, an interesting mix because we have some switches that don't do that. So you have to be careful if you're hooking a couple of them together. You've got to use a crossover. <clears throat> Telenet SSHN encryption. I have a key. Public and private. RSA is what we usually use when we configure that. I already talked about this as a repeat of something we talked about before, but we had um we had router 23 connected, I believe, to router 24. This all area could be considered the core. In here, we're figuring out how to distribute the information, like if we had uh, maybe another switch here, and maybe another switch here, how we distribute the information. Then somewhere in all networks, you have some way to access it in, either directly to a switch, or you may have an access point in which you have some device that access it, access it using Wi-Fi. <clears throat> okay, we already talked about that. Let me switch here. Wednesday, the twenty-eighth. This would be the second day in week seven. Talked about to the students financial aid. And we also did some work on med metacognition and learning. Students should think about how they learn metacognition. Switching, config, security, finish up labs, check connectivity. Make sure we have a workstation switch, check connectivity. I gave the students a handout. We talked about security. Telnet, not secure. We can SSH using RSA, we can set up authentication and encryption. We talked about port security, you can set the MAC address, you can learn it dynamic, we talked about sticky, and we talked about the different levels, you know, what happens if it gets a bad MAC address. You know, do you want it to send a message, um, not let them in, or completely shut down the port. Depends on what you want to do. <clears throat> Here is our lab scenario. We talked about pinging um, this address up here. We talked about VLAN 99. Ports on that. Default <clears throat> gateway IP address for the management VLAN. Some passwords that were on some of the machines. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I guess here we're just talking about submitting the lab. Yeah, when you fill it in, I was reminding people to think. Back a tracer, make sure you're doing those. What we were talking about here is you need to test, maybe check 
yourself in terms of are you learning are you learning the material and not just going through the steps This is some of the same stuff I just talked about. <clears throat> Monday. Okay. Week 8. Almost midterm. SSH and switches. Check port security. Intro. We talked a little bit about VLANs. Also talk about clearing the switches. So we did a couple examples. We made a VLANs, put some switch on it, port center. We um, create some VLANs. We had these second switches we actually used console cables to connect to and our first set of switches. So we added these switches and we worked on, um, we saw that a trunk automatically was created <clears throat> and we started our first work in VLANs. Virtual LAN. You know you can take a switch and you can split it into multiple VLANs. And the ports then on one VLAN can only talk to the ports on another VLAN. So if this is a different VLAN, it can only talk to the ports that are on that VLAN. Same thing here, if this is a different one, they can only talk that. Um, all the VLANs are on their separate network. Thus they will not see broadcasts from each other. And the only way to move between VLANs is to route, because they're on separate networks. So you have to have some router or routing device. Okay, so I did a... Uh, I showed some of the VLANs. So we have um, VLAN 9, VLAN, the native VLAN on 90, access VLAN 99, we have these ports here. Um, black hole, these are ones we're not using. And then here's VLAN 10. It's not named, but these ports are on the VLAN. Shoulder trunk, modes on, they must have typed in. That one Q is the capsulation. The tagging for the trunking, status trunking, native VLAN is 90. Yes, this is the same example. You know, one thing um, you'll notice. I think we uh, might have changed what ports are on. It looks like it's the same thing. Wednesday the 7th. We did our evaluations. This was the network. The students need to configure their switch and router depending on which one they were assigned. And that is it up through spring break. <clears throat>